Yo, what is going on everybody? Dan Tramta here and welcome back to my tutorial series, Browser Noise. This is tutorial number 14 and this tutorial is all about effects. We have something that sounds like a snare drum, but let's try to make it sound more like a snare drum, okay? To do this, I'm going to add what's called a bandpass filter, okay? And I'll talk more about what that means, but first let's just do all the assignments and stuff like that. So bandpass filter equals new P5 dot. We could do filter and specify the type in here, or we could just call bandpass directly. And then we can set the frequency to something like I don't know, 500 and then BP filter dot res. So the resonance, um, we'll give it a three for now. We're gonna have to make it so that the bandpass filter processes the snare noise so that we get filtered noise. But before we do that, let's talk about the different types of filters and the different settings we would use on the filters. On my personal GitHub, I have a few examples of how to filter audio using P5JS Sound Library. So in this case, what I'm showing is really just as simple as it gets. We have a drop down menu that displays all of the types of filters and all of the types of settings that you can use on them. So for example, this one is the all pass filter, which kind of means exactly how it sounds. All frequencies pass through, okay? So it really doesn't have much of a, of a perceived effect at all. But if we switch to low pass, notice that the low frequencies pass through and the high frequencies that are this way, the low frequencies get passed through, the high frequencies get filtered out. It can be a little bit confusing thinking just thinking about the words like low pass filter, it's like you're filtering something that has low in the world word. So it might mean that you're filtering the lows, but uh, no, you're passing the lows and filtering everything else out. And the reverse is true with the high pass filter, the high uh, frequencies pass through and we hear them, the low frequencies get filtered out and bandpass filter is a case in which we have a band of frequencies that pass through and everything else on the low end and the high end get filtered out and just to show a couple more that's a, that's kind of loud but this is a low shelf which means um if we could set the frequency to show that there's like a, a shelf. When it gets to the bottom, it's sort of, there's a shelf up there, <laughs> if that makes sense. And same thing with a high shelf. And we have another one called peaking, which has a little peak in the middle or wherever you set the frequency to. And a notch, which, uh, let me raise that is a notch filter is when you have sort of a band of frequencies that gets filtered out. So, and this resonance slider, we can sort of adjust the width of that notch. So if it's way down here, you could see that we have a huge gap in, or a large band of frequencies that get filtered out. And if we have it way up high to something like a hundred, then you can almost barely notice like that, those couple of frequencies over there at 10,139, they're not being sound. They're not sounding right now. So those last several filter types that I just mentioned, the peaking notch and the high and low shelves, those are all essential in an EQ. So here I have uh, another filter example that I uh, have up on my GitHub if you're interested in checking out. I built it all in P5JS again, but the idea is you have this peaking filter that also serves as a notch filter and you can adjust the width of it like this. And if there's some sort of frequency that you wanna get rid of in your uh, sound, you would of course use this to filter it out or boost it if, if you want it. And so we also have our high shelf 
and our low shelf. So going back to the sketch, if I use a bandpass filter with a frequency set to 500 and a resonance set to three, that's going to sound like this, right? It's, it's noise, but it doesn't just sound like static noise. It kind of has like a tone to it almost because of this resonance right here. Okay, fab. So now what I want to do is call snare noise that disconnect. Okay. Disconnect doesn't mean that snare noise is no longer processing. It just means that it's not going to be routed directly to our speakers. We want to first route our noise to our bandpass filter, which by default will connect to our master out of our audio context. And we do that by saying snare noise dot connect BP filter. Now let's hit run. Okay, that <clears throat> that really knocked down the amplitude. So since it's so quiet, I'm just going to bring up the attack level quite a bit and let's run it again. Yeah, that's much closer to a snare drum already. Now say we want to add some reverb, we can go through a similar process. We'll declare a variable called reverb or rev, and then somewhere we'll have to say rev equals new p5 dot reverb. And then somewhere down here, we're going to have to connect BP filter dot connect rev like so. Let's hit run. Oh yeah, that sounds amazing. Now I know you're thinking, should we be disconnecting the filter? Well, not necessarily because we kind of for the reverb we kind of want a mix of the dry uh, sound and the wet sound. So we're gonna have it's so that both of them are connected to our master outs of our audio context. Rather than connect, we can also use the word chain. So I could just show you that this works. It's the same thing, but this way, if we have a bunch of effects, we can route them all in one line. So let me very quickly create a distortion object just to show that. So we'll say let this, and then somewhere around here, we'll say, dis equals new p5 dot distortion and then right here where we where we're calling our chain or we're chaining and routing all of our effects we can just add dis to the end of that Yet another way to route the signal is to tell what our effects ought to process. So rather than saying, hey, filter, connect your output to the input of reverb, we can say, hey, reverb, apply your process to the BP filter. Sometimes that is nicer. So let's comment out this and then go ahead and say rev.process BP filter. And this way we can specify parameters of our reverb, like the tail length, so we'll set that to 0 0.5, and the decay rate we'll set to one, all in one line. Let me hit run. Project number two is complete. And now that it's the end of the project, it is time for me to suggest a challenge to you all. Go look for a drum machine online somewhere or a physical drum machine and take note of all of the features of that drum machine. Go back to where we left off with our main drum machine, which was at the end of tutorial 12, and try to add some of the standard drum machine features that you are observing in your online drum machine that you've found or your physical one and try to add them to the one that we've been working on. And don't get frustrated if you can't add them all. It's relatively convoluted to do in JavaScript, but at the very least, you should absolutely try to add this snare drum that we just built into the drum machine project with all of its effects and everything. That's all I have for now. In fact, I've been itching to move on to Tone.js for a while, and I think we're ready for it. I'll see you then later.